It really is a quick fix generation right now where there's always a quicker way to do something. There's always a corner to cut to get somewhere to get towards that goal. And the fitness industry is no different. You know, they don't realize that actually it takes years and years and years of hard training and dieting to, to build that physique, to build that fitness. Look at Ronaldo. He spends hours and hours and hours mastering his skills. He didn't just get given those skills. It's the same in the gym. You work hard, you train hard, you diet. It takes years. I want to show people that you don't have to cut corners and you don't have to mess around with your body in order to get, you know, the physique you want. Okay, dieting and training will get you there, but you have to have patience, hard work, and you have to, you know, really, really focus on that end goal. Imagine your good buddy, he says he's doing the show. You know him, you work out with him, you train with him, you know what he looks like, his, his general look, right? He starts training for the show, you lose touch. He's uh, not really lose touch, but he's focused. So he's in his own world, he's, he's eating properly, he's not coming out for a beer, he's training all the time. And then all of a sudden it's like, hey, go buy your tickets for the show, it's this day, it's this time, and you show up. And he's at the show and you see him for the first time in a couple weeks and his face is just orange with the spray tan under the fluorescent lights. He looks totally different. The cheeks were a bit sunken, he looked a, a bit gaunt. The physical transformation, I mean, he was in great shape before, don't get me wrong. It, he was always very fit. Um, this just took it to the next level, to the, almost to the extreme, I would say. Hi, my name is John Mills. I've been a personal trainer and lifestyle coach for over a decade now. I love my job. I love helping people make positive changes in their lives. I've been an athlete all my life. I competed at a very high level when I was younger. So I'm driven by helping people make positive choices in their lives. Before, antidepressants were in my life and I needed them to release the serotonin in my body. Now I get a natural release of serotonin when I exercise. Those endorphins, I'm addicted to them. They make me happy, they make me who I am. I love using the bell, I love using other tools like that to push my body to new, li new limits and get sweaty. That's who I am, that's what I'm about. You guys are gonna follow me through my 26 week journey to and from the stage. I've never done this before. Yes, I've dieted and trained towards a goal before, but never this specific. You guys are gonna be there for the good, the bad and the ugly size of contest prep. I haven't got a clue what my body's gonna go through, but you're gonna be there with me. How did you find your experience? How was your prep? From start to finish, it was probably a roller coaster. Towards the end, when people would approach me and ask me or say, I'm thinking about doing a show, yeah. I would tell them it's not all sunshine and lollipops like everybody thinks. I'd always thought about doing a competition, even kind of growing up, um, loved the look of fitness competitors, but never thought it was something that was for me. It's, it's a wild ride. Just everything, all your hormones are out of, out of whack. Yeah. You, your brain chemistry could be affected. You have no idea. You kind of feel like a fish out of water with, with friends and family who have no idea. They just think you're bodybuilding or starving yourself. They don't realize the process involved. It's not for the weak-minded, that's for sure. Both men and women who actually go into quite serious depressions after winning shows because they look at the pictures of the show and then they just hate who's in the mirror for the rest of the year. It's an emotional roller coaster and extreme you're dealing with the, yeah, extreme transformation. It's taxing on just every aspect of your life. Uh, it's not a proven fact there, I mean, it's, but it's guaranteed that you, you become someone you're not. Learn how the body works and how you can manipulate your body mm -hmm. and, and train yourself to, to be the best you can, right? Mm -hmm. to, to look the best you can. It becomes a lot more enjoyable if you actually know the science kind of behind bodybuilding. Yep. So it's not just like, oh, you know, I gotta starve myself yep. all the time and all yep. this, but it's not really like so that. You educate know? yourself. Right? Yeah, educate yourself on it and just, you know, train your butt off. If you treat this as, as health, and, and sometimes the peak is too hard for people. This is a peaking sport. Maybe this isn't the right time to peak. Hi guys, we're here just outside the CBC studios here in Toronto. Uh, we're just about to go into the UFE World Championships. I'm a little bit excited, a little bit nervous actually, and I'm not even competing. I just got to see what I've got to do, and um, hopefully the guys on Dream Team, Scott's team, are going to be doing well as well, so we get to see what it's all about.
I've never been to a show before, neither has Nick, and uh, it was uh, it was, it was amazing, um, but very surreal, a bit of a weird experience. I have to be honest, I'm pretty worried about it. I can't imagine having the confidence to get up there and do what those guys did. I'm really, really nervous about doing that, and I'm not even sure I'm gonna be capable of doing it. So how we met is actually quite a funny story. Um, I was obviously working in the gym, running my business in London, uh, and a, a colleague of mine really fancied Jenna. And uh, so I actually went up to her to show him how you can use the uniform to your advantage. I gave her a couple of free personal training sessions. As you do. As you do. Um, we obviously started a relationship. He she actually convinced me to become a trainer. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And now we run our business here in uh, Canada. We've been, it's our second year of business. We haven't killed each other yet. It works really, really it's well. good. When John first mentioned he was going to do this and do a show, document everything, I didn't necessarily think it was the best idea, only because you know how we train and our philosophy for how we teach our clients isn't about extremes well, well we just wanted to make sure it was going to be healthy like we don't want to portray anything that's not you know balanced and healthy that we yeah. wouldn't do ourselves you know that's the whole point i was hoping he was taking into consideration the fact that we're getting married in june uh, like, yeah, of course, I'm going to be in charge of a lot of the details of planning for the wedding. I'm going to be in great shape. But I was like, all right, well, you just worry about yourself then, and I'll worry about our wedding. So I'm, I'm just interested to see what happens with this guy. <laughs> By the time you show up on stage, dieting always sucks, yes. Yeah. But what we're looking for is, are you healthy? Yeah. Are you happy yeah. for the most part? Yeah. And do you feel well? Absolutely. So that that's going to be um, our target. We want to also go to win. Yeah. So I hope that everyone shows up at their best and is yeah. ready for you. Absolutely. So if I don't win, it's not the end of the world. But if I do, that's it's amazing. Yeah. <laughs> uh, it's real life. But yeah. we're going to win. Yes, okay. absolutely. Okay, Scott, so break it down for me. All right. So... Something that you're used to is a lot of high intensity kettlebell work, yep. um, full body stuff. Mm -hmm. uh, we are going to incorporate some kettlebell work into the program, yeah, so right. yeah. we'll work together on that okay. one. Yes, that's right. What we're actually going to do is kind of keep it to a five day split. Right. And what it's actually going to be is we're going to focus on a few things. Strength, some power, and then your hypertrophy stuff, mm -hmm. your typical bodybuilding stuff. Yeah. You'll have certain foods that I want you to keep in your diet plan. You know, your spinaches, your broccolis, your spur spirulina, yep. um, the good whole foods that we want in there. But you're going to dictate mm. the food that's actually going into the macronutrient. Mm. And this all comes from um, kind of breaking the mold of your typical contest prep. Yep. But we're going to show that it does work 100%. And yep. as long as that we keep to these nutrients, you'll lose weight accordingly to... Uh, to the weeks that we're counting down. So, okay. so looking at your photos, the base is really good because of the athletics that you've had before. So now we're gonna start getting a little bit nitpicky. What we're gonna focus on is more lat development mm -hmm. and hamstrings. Yeah. So during prep, all we're gonna use cardio for is specific calorie burners. So we'll we'll focus maybe more on you know how big your arms are <laughs> yeah. rather than it's how about, fast you can run. It's all about how I can, how I look rather than how I perform <laughs> yeah. right now. Yeah, yeah. I, get it. I get it. Exactly. Yeah. Hi guys, I'm here at the lab. I'm just about to get my blood work done. Um, it's right at the beginning of training. Um, I'm going to get my blood work done at the beginning, in the middle, and at the end. Uh, we're going to see how the diet and the training has affected my uh, body's chemistry. Um, so we'll keep you updated. So here at Body Systems, these guys are amazing. Scott and AJ, obviously you know Scott. AJ is uh, always here, he's wicked, always helps me out. Yeah. Just coming in to pick up my monthly supply. These boys are wicked. There you go.
day one. Let the fun begin. God, we haven't talked in six months. Know you're busy, I will not disrupt. Lately, I've been living in this slump. Thought I had it figured out, misjudged. Don't know where I started drifting off. Maybe it's what I've been sipping on. Every weekend with a different broad. Funny, I thought that this was all I ever needed. Some famous, some money. My skies would be clearing. My days would be sunny. My family would love me. My friends wouldn't judge me. They'd all be proud of me for staying so hungry. Asking you shall receive, that's what I believe What did I actually ask for? What the fuck do I actually rap for? Lately my mentality is NASCAR Mine's racing, I'm pacing, time's wasted These days it's just pressure, refresher When the fuck did I ask you to have more? God tell me that you hear me, I ain't thinking clearly Why would you ever listen to me? Staring at the ceiling, think I'm disappearing Count my days instead of counting sheep Never thought that this identity so this is going to be interesting, every day I have to measure myself, I have to weigh myself. Um, I can't remember the last time I weighed myself, really, to be honest, every six weeks potentially. Um, so yeah, I've got to make a note of my weight every morning before I train. Uh, and then every week send measurements to Scott, as well as write down my numbers that I've managed and how I was feeling, so we can start to see about my energy levels and how the diet and the training is affecting those. Obviously got up those weights each week as well. Today's all about setting, or this week's all about setting those one rep maxes and then working from those percentages that we said before. So uh, it's getting real. just finished my lower body uh, workout. Each week looks the same as in structure, but what we're doing is increasing the weights. I had my third session with Scott today and he's just been fine tuning a few of the lifts, uh, making things a little tougher. So it's very, very different. So new techniques, takes a little bit more out of you. It's Christmas this week, so uh, I have to have quite a lean Christmas. Although we've played around with some of the macronutrients, uh, which means I can have a few more carbs and a little bit more fat on Christmas day. Some of the exercises are boring, as you saw, some isolation stuff, which I normally avoid doing because I don't need to do that normally. So uh, yeah, the breaks are taking their toll on me, but you know, it is what it is. We just have to focus on the end goal. Just measuring out my Christmas dinner. Just about to put my gravy on, so I'm gonna have to estimate that. I didn't go for the double baked potatoes just purely because I didn't know what was in them. Dessert, super tough. I'm gonna have probably a bake or tart. One of these bad boys.
I left the party at 9.30 when the, uh, the chips and the dips came out and the wine and the cheese came out for the second time because I'd eaten all my uh, carbs that were allotted for alcohol and all my foods. So I, I was just like, right, I've got to go. Yeah, it was tough. I'm glad to get it over and done with and get on with the training and get on with the diet now. Morning guys, it's week four of training. It's the week after Christmas. It's back, traps and biceps today. Trying to increase the weights, uh, working on some power, some isolation and some strength. A combination of all three in all of my sessions. Uh, really feeling good today, so let's see what we can do. That was tough. Normally I do a, a circuit similar to that. Give myself 30 seconds in between. Hit the full body. Normally go a little heavier, but I haven't done it for a while. So I'm not as conditioned. Plus also you saw, I just did a full session before that. So I'm already pretty tired. But you know what? I'm fucking smiling. I really enjoyed that. I can't wait to do my next one. So it's Sunday, uh, the end of training week six. You saw me earlier in the gym, the week's training went really well. I was down weight, so down to 196.4 uh, pounds. So that was the lowest I'd been and I was managing to, managing to keep my, uh, my lean muscle and my body's really starting to take shape. This week, I just feel like I've taken my foot off the pedal a little bit because I've been getting some positive reinforcement. I've sort of just let little things sneak in like I've picked at things whereas before I wouldn't have picked at things I had a bowl of granola which also wasn't in my macros for the day so that was extra had an extra glass of wine so I really I really struggled with um yeah with myself and I saw I, I could really feel myself like doubting what I was doing and how I was doing it and then I obviously got on the scales today at the gym and I was up to 198 and that made me feel terrible and I started to really feel a little depressed. Jana's talking about going out with some friends next week um, and they're talking about appetizers and what can we eat and uh, what can we drink and there's a part of me that just doesn't want to go at all because it's it's so it can be so difficult and I'm starting to really appreciate what a commitment this can be. So I can only imagine like how much more intense this is going to get but I'm having a rough time and, and this week and at the end of this, this weekend and uh, I'm really struggling a little bit. So I'm obviously going to refocus and um, make sure that the next week is perfect because I've been doing really, really well. 
So it's bright and early on a Sunday morning here. It's uh, the end of week seven and I've dragged Jenna into the gym once again. I think it's the fourth week in a row that we've been here on a Sunday. Jenna's been great. She's actually changed her training around and she's been weighing her food out as well. So uh, how do you feel this morning? I don't really want to be here, but we're going to go with it. <laughs> But hey, you're going to see us train together, which is uh, part of it. The support that she gives me is um, pushing me through this. And uh, as I say, we don't really want to be here on a Sunday morning. But that said, here we are. So let's do it. I'm sitting here with Michael Brabovich. I came to your show, which was my first show. So I saw you on stage, yeah. Uh, and uh, yeah, that was an amazing experience. First pro event. Wow, that's amazing. How many times have you competed? How many shows have you done? Five shows in total to date. Right. Yeah, and I would say there's a huge difference between the first year and the second year. Yeah. The thing that drove me to the first year was just wanting to get on stage. Didn't really have any goals in mind. I want to be the best version of me. Yep. And then in the second year, my goal was to get my pro card uh, in fitness model yep. and at least qualify for elite in bodybuilding, which I did. The first, I'd say four weeks after the show, I was actually leaner than when I was on stage because I had this idea in my mind that I want to say super lean. I had to maintain a certain body image. Uh, that was one challenge. And then one thing I've actually never talked about to date is the fact that I actually developed bulimia around Christmas time. Oh, wow. And I just kept walking by certain things, uh, cereals, Pop-Tarts, and uh -huh. it suddenly just clicked and I just started binging. And then uh, it happened that day and then I, I felt awful about it. I felt really guilty. I said, that's not something I want to get involved with. That'll right. never happen again. And then yeah. I just started picking up. So I don't have a history with mental illness or eating disorders or anything like that. So for me, that was something that just, it was an eye opener that I could be susceptible to something like that. Absolutely. Uh, I didn't get help for it. No. I just kind of beat it on my own, but okay. I, I, I'm over it now. You are? I haven't had any That's... reoccurrences. And I want people to understand that no matter how strong you are as a person, mentally, physically, whatever, you're not, Yeah. you're still vulnerable, vulnerable yeah. to this stuff, especially when you're going through extreme things like contest prep. Yeah. It's training day two of week eight. As you saw earlier this week, I really struggled. I didn't get a lot of sleep, had to push myself for a workout, but that's what this is all about. We've changed things around a little bit because I've noticed some areas that I really need to fill out for the show. So we're gonna hit the muscle from a different angle. And then we'll do some bells and a bosu. I haven't done that for a while, so we should see how that goes. <laughs> Wow. 
fitness for me that's what fitness is all about but for different people fitness means something totally different obviously I'm going into a new walk of life where fitness is all about how the body looks but how did you get that body there some people do it from doing strength training some people really really crash diet I honestly believe you can do it from a balance of dieting good strength training and endurance training fitness training like that. This is what fitness is all about for me. 300 pounds, let's do this. New PR. Come on. Up, drive, drive, drive. Good. Yeah. First test posing day, and um, it's freezing cold in this room. to a refeed this week Saturday I get a refeed by then I'm gonna be absolutely destroyed uh, Jana won't actually let me use the kitchen at all um, because I'm like so spaced out by the end of the day that I'm making stupid mistakes it's really tough I'm lightheaded right now I can just about get through my training sessions and then I've got nothing left I'm trying to make sense when I'm working with my clients but by the time I get home I've got nothing Jana's just laughing at me I'm having to try and pose every night as well after a really busy day. Posing is probably one of the hardest things I've ever done, but it's getting a little better. It's getting less wooden, getting a little bit more uh, routine, but it's really, really tough. This end of prep is starting to really push me to the limit. I've been depleting my body for 12 weeks now, and uh, it's really starting to tell, really starting to tell. I'm really feeling it. 
some people may look at me and they may assume that I've never had any dark times in my life, never had any issues or struggled with anything. They're very wrong. I suffered from depression from a very young age all the way through to my early 20s. It almost killed me. Uh, somebody saved my life when I was 27. Um, and every day I live on this earth uh, is a present. Uh, it's, a, it's a present that someone else gave me. There's definitely uh, an unknown in prep and right. how dark it can kind of get. Right. I think sometimes it's not so much like the diet or the training, it's more like the mental aspect. I remember being dark in a dungeon, wanting to have food back in my body, and just feeling at an all-time rock bottom. I really had to dig deep and go into a dark place just yeah. to get through. You know, you're eating loads and loads of calories to bulk up and then you're cutting back can't do anything, you can't do anything social, you're hangry and grumpy all the time. My relationships with friends were, were strained, relationships with family, couldn't be dating anyone or go out on dates. So sometimes I have had to tell people, you know, like you're not mentally there. I've seen people faint on stage many times. A lot can go wrong and a lot of people get, uh, they actually get ill from having done a show. Mm -hmm. And. You know, that, that's, that takes a toll on the body. It yeah. takes a toll on, on the heart. It takes a toll on your hormones. It, you know, it takes a toll on your mind. Dehydration impacts your kidney, your livers, but, but it can recover in a healthy young person. Mm -hmm. You do it repeatedly, and I'm not so sure what will happen. Everyone lines up on stage, and then the people in the audience are like, oh my God, like, I want to look like this person. Mm -hmm. Like, how great must they feel? Yeah. And the sad answer is that 80% of people are likely don't feel great about their bodies and they have eating disorders. There's lots of concerns with uh, eating disorders and just mental illness and just body image, uh, body dysmorphia. I don't think there's enough tools out there. You've got to be very self-aware and yeah. check like self, yeah. what's going on in my head and body and how do I feel. That, that makes the difference in a prep, right. you know, it makes the difference between someone who gives up or someone who continues yeah. because there will be hard times. As soon as one person talks about it, I think everybody's going to feel relieved. I would have loved to talk to somebody about post-show yeah. and how I'm feeling. Oh yeah. man, it would feel great if someone just told me, man, just relax a little bit. Yeah. Everything will this work is, out. The beginning was pretty easy, yeah. but down to the six weeks below, it was just, I didn't even care about my girlfriend. I just cared about weighing my food, getting my food in, getting my, my, my injections in, and going to bed. That's all I cared about. It becomes very selfish. It becomes very selfish. Sunday morning, I'm in the gym. I'm absolutely shattered. It's been a really, really hard week this week, and my mental state's not, not quite where it should be. My physical state is definitely run down. I've left legs until today um, because my recovery has been terrible. My body's recovery has taken two or three days longer than it normally does to to recover from a session, so my legs have only just started feeling normal. I've got kettlebells to do today as well, so I'm normally excited about that, but the last two weeks they've been a really, 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 really hard task. <laughs> Four weeks out and it's, it's taking its toll, man. Energy levels are shit. I had a refood yesterday, so 475 grams of carbs. I feel empty. But I pretty much felt like that all week anyway, so my body's just uh, run down, tired, dizzy, mindless. Fun, fun, fun. The reality of contest prep right here. Yes, there are some good points, of course. Both the good, the bad, and the ugly, and today is fucking ugly.
I'm having a real mental struggle right now. It's probably one of the worst you've... I'm having a real mental struggle right now. It's probably the worst I've felt in any workout. As you saw, I struggled all the way through that. I feel terrible. So I think I'm gonna be sensible. I'm gonna to listen to my body. But there's a part of me that just feels that that 15 minutes is gonna make the difference. So what I'm gonna do, I'll add it into next week's sessions. So I'll do an extra kettlebell set next week in order to make up for it, because I think it might just kill me off. I almost gave up at the beginning of that session. I said to Nick, I don't think it's a good idea to uh, carry on training because those deadlifts felt so heavy and I was just really worried about hurting my back because I could feel I wasn't in a perfect position. But I pushed through it. Um, I was safe, I took my time. It took me about 40 minutes to get through my deadlifts. And now we're just gonna stretch and mobilize the body because when it starts to feel bad, it tenses out. So we're gonna spend a little bit of time stretching here. Any good training program, any athlete or any normal person that's training as well needs to be put back together again. So I'm here for some deep tissue massage. Amy has got magic hands. She's amazing. I see her every week and she helps put me back together so I can go back and do another hard week of training. I'd say there's definitely a muscle tone change, um, a little bit more adhesions, fascial restrictions, more so in the hips where you already had problems, mm -hmm. they've just been heightened a little bit. Um, overall, obviously, you're, you have basically no body fat, <laughs> mm -hmm. and just very lean, your muscle, I can feel the muscle fibers. Considering that I've been going so heavy, I've been trying to maintain my body, like I've been doing a lot of mobility before and after yeah. coming to see you. I feel, I don't, even though you can feel tension in that area, that you feel tension in. I feel like I you've done feel, a good job keeping yeah. your body in a fairly good um, spot compared to what you were. Mm. You haven't gotten exponentially worse no. by any stretch considering what you've been doing to your body. Right. So yeah. definitely maintaining the stretching and mobility exercises and yeah. you know regular massage. That's played a big part in, I think, keeping you from injury and being in a lot of pain. Okay. Thanks, Amazing. I'm ready to sleep now. Uh, how was that for you? It was amazing for me. <laughs> I'm naked under here. You ain't seeing the full Monty. Wow. It's Friday afternoon, I'm four weeks out tomorrow and um, I thought I'd let you guys know some of the crazy things that have been going on over the past week. I've managed to lock myself out of the gym. Um, I've managed to leave my clothes in my office thinking I took them into the changing room to then find myself in a towel and having no clothes and having to text Scott to come and give me my clothes so I could actually get out of the gym. But another side effect which is unfortunate is that I've got no energy for anything else. So bless her, I've got no sex drive. Like this is the first time in my life I can honestly say that I don't have energy for anything. John was talking the other day about when he goes into these, uh, you know, supplement stores and you said you used to see. <laughs> more and more we see the, um, the supplements for male penis enhancement. And I didn't realize, I just assumed that it was for people that were doing potentially steroids who had penile dysfunction or, you know, something like that. I didn't really understand why all of a sudden there's this influx of all these different pills, especially like so readily available. Um, and now I get it. Like I can understand why uh, somebody may need to use this because I probably would need to use this in order to <laughs> have the energy to, uh, you know, over the last couple of weeks anyway. So it's not something I'm proud of, but it's definitely something that's new to me. Um, it's very unfortunate, but Jan is very supportive. Uh, we're getting married obviously this, this year. So uh, it's a bit weird. <laughs>
But I thought I'd let you guys know because it's it's definitely it's one of, of it. it's part of it and it's one of the side effects and it's it's not great. I have to be sure, honest. People don't talk about it. Yeah, it's not probably not spoken about. But now I can see why those pills are so readily available. Um, yeah. So uh, yep, not not great. And um, I'm just hoping that in two weeks' time, when we start introducing my calories again, I start to feel normal because I'm starting to to really lose the will by the end of the <laughs> week. And I think Jana's going to end up killing me otherwise. I might do. <laughs> That's Wednesday's workout. You saw me on Sunday. What a difference. I couldn't even swing those bells after the session. Could hardly get through my session. That was tough. Energy still low, but so much better. So, as you well know, if I get on stage, I cannot get on stage looking Canadian white. I have to be brown. So, I've entrusted a good friend of ours, Hilary Van Fleet, who's gonna do uh, my tanning for me. So today we're gonna do your test tan. We're doing Gimme Brown 14% to bring out definition. And we'll see how it goes. got Scotty, Mike, Egan is here. We saw him on stage a few months ago. He, looked, he was looking shredded, amazing back then, and uh, he's gonna help me with some of our posing today. I just always want to better myself. Right. Um, like I said, I'm always up for a challenge yeah. and I'm always setting higher and higher goals for myself uh -huh. because I believe the sky's the limit. I just try and keep things as simple as possible so yeah. that okay. I'm just no stress. We saw you on stage. You were 
in fantastic condition. Were you dehydrated when you were on stage? No, I didn't manipulate any water. No, nothing at all? No. So some people might be surprised by, by that. I would say 70% of people manipulate their, their water intake. Okay. Um, usually they'll drop it about a day before. Right. And coming into the show day, just zero percent water wow and you know you can see like the, they, they have no saliva in their mouth you can hear it's just it sounds like paste in wow. their mouth and okay. you know their bodies are dependent on water Absolutely. and it's just it's really hard to see that if you take 20 weeks to prepare for a show there's no reason why you should manipulate anything no you're yeah. just slowly gradually in like why right. would you change anything the last two days yeah. right if you're ready you're ready if you're yeah. not you're not we always want to look stage ready. Like we always want to feel like we're as aesthetic as we can be at all times. But the reality is that if you want to build to be a better person next year, you have to sacrifice some things, right? You can't have it all at once. Mm -mm. My advice for you post show would be stick to your routine. Mm -hmm. You know, don't change anything right away because nothing really does change. We do flexible dieting because we're in it for a marathon and not for a sprint. Mm -hmm. So this is something you should be able to foresee for yeah. the rest of your life. Yeah. Stay focused, mm -hmm. keep practicing your posing, yeah. and stay positive because yep. you look great.